Love has always been considered a matter of the heart, but romance is really in our head. Studies from the last two decades reveal how the brain behaves during each phase of love. When two people meet for the first time, their brains size each other up almost instantly. In a game of hot or not, people make up their minds in only 200 milliseconds, and they are especially quick when their response is a definitive not. Your very first impression has a lot to do with appearance. People from many different cultures like symmetrical faces, probably because symmetry reflects good health and desirable genes. We are also attracted to people who share our physical traits, sometimes disturbingly so. One study photoshopped people's faces into members of the opposite gender. Not only did most people fail to recognize the altered photo of themselves, they also gave that photo their highest rating. Voice is important too. <laughs> Women usually like voices that belong to men with attractive bodies, masculine faces, broad shoulders, and narrow waists. Men tend to favor voices attached to women with narrow waists, broad hips, and youthful features. The way someone smells changes how we feel about them as well. In a Swiss study, female college students sniffed t-shirts that male college students had slept in for two nights. Most women preferred the scent of t-shirts worn by men whose immune systems were different from their own. The idea is that their children would have more ways to fight off diseases. When you like what you see, hear, and smell, certain chemicals begin to bubble in your brain. Spurts of dopamine and norepinephrine, chemicals that brain cells use to communicate, spark feelings of happiness and excitement. Your heart rate increases, your skin flushes, and you sweat a little. As you get to know someone, a different team of neurotransmitters and hormones starts swimming in your brain. Kissing keeps the dopamine flowing, which keeps pleasure circuits in the brain happy. But it also decreases the amount of cortisol, a stress hormone, and boosts levels of oxytocin, the love hormone. Pretty much any kind of affection, kissing, hugging, cuddling, elevates oxytocin levels. Scientists have also found that people who are in love have unusually low levels of a vital neurotransmitter called serotonin. Similarly, the brain cells of people with obsessive-compulsive disorder are unusually insensitive to serotonin. In other words, love is an obsession. When someone is dumped, that obsession often intensifies. Involuntary memories of lost love overwhelm the rejected party's brain. The breakup becomes a puzzle that must be solved. Some scientists call this state frustration attraction. Romantic rejection keeps serotonin levels low, which fuels the obsession, and stimulates production of dopamine, intensifying the passion. Romantic rejection is also stressful, booing levels of the stress hormone norepinephrine, and it's painful. In fact, as far as your brain is concerned, physical pain and the pain of social rejection are the same thing, activating the same areas of the brain. Love hurts as much as any physical wound. Eventually, the dumped person's brain accepts that it won't get the love it craves like a drug. Levels of dopamine and serotonin normalize. The next time you feel the flutters of first love or the sting of rejection, remember that much of the way you feel is explained by transient chemical changes in the brain. And those same changes are happening in billions of brains around the world, right now, just as they have for millions of years.